In today's video, we're going to look at a pretty weird graphics card I found on Newegg. It's an AMD graphics card by a company called Korn. No, not that Korn, Korn. And in today's video, we're going to see if it's any good. But before that, we've got our first video sponsor today. That's super exciting. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark. Now, there are a couple of reasons why you should probably use a VPN. Now, the first one is that it helps secure all of your internet browsing. You know, it means that other people can't track all of the dodgy things you look at on the internet. Now, another reason why you should probably get a VPN, and this, in my opinion, is the most important one. Do you ever get that feeling that every time you look for a specific show or movie on Netflix, it's only your region that doesn't have it available? Like, like Rick and Morty, for example. You don't get Rick and Morty in the Canada Netflix store. And something like Surfshark will help you get access to more regions and more content. Surfshark is a really good VPN option for a couple reasons. The first one is the fact that it's pretty easy to use. When you sign up, they send you an email that kind of explains to you how to set Surfshark up on your various devices and the app works pretty well. But another thing that I really like about it is the fact that you can use unlimited devices on a single Surfshark account. So if all of this stuff sounds pretty good to you, you can sign up to Surfshark using my codes in the video description and you'll get a pretty big discount, you know, all that good stuff. Now, the other day I was browsing Newegg for some graphics cards to do videos on, something that I actually do uh, an embarrassing amount of. And I saw that these corn graphics cards were on sale. Now they were all fairly low end variants and the RX 560 one specifically caught my eye. Now, when you go into the listing for this graphics card, there are a couple of things that make my spidey sense tingle. The first one is the fact that it lists a core frequency of 1500 megahertz. But then when you go into the specs, it lists a core frequency of 1050 megahertz and a boost frequency of 1250 megahertz. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but those numbers aren't, aren't the same. Another thing that's super dodgy is the fact that they list the CUDA core count of an AMD RX 560. They're supposedly an add-in board partner. They should know that AMD graphics cards don't have CUDA cores in them. Like, how does that even happen? So I decided to buy one and see whether or not we get a dodgy graphics card that comes with a whole array of SDDs, or we get a good graphics card from an underrated manufacturer that nobody's ever heard of before. Or, you know, it may just be purely functional. So with that, let's see what kind of package we got. They do that interesting thing where they lie about the value of the product so that you don't have to pay like import duty. Uh, so uh, thanks, Corn. <laughs> and the graphics card comes from Hong Kong, which I feel like is fairly weird for Newegg. Everything that I've bought off of Newegg has come from like local distributors, uh, at most from the US. So with that, let's open the DHL packaging and see what we have. <laughs> I clearly wasn't expecting my address to also be in here, but <laughs> uh, this... This clearly isn't a great start. Um, this is very Wish graphics card-esque. This packaging does not inspire confidence. This does look a little bit like a pound of cocaine hides in here. Um, I don't really know how this package makes it through customs without any questions. Uh, but anyway, let's just kind of... Uh, at least it's very well protected. Ugh. Okay, there we go. Uh, so this is some very persistent packaging. <laughs> this is actually, first off, they, they, they leave this little bit of paper in here saying, need your positive review if you're satisfied. Although this packaging just looks like generic graphics card packaging. It gives you no indication of uh, what graphics card is in here. At least we know that it's compatible with Windows 7 and Windows 8, which is, uh, that's very comforting. Okay, so first off, uh, we have a dual Molex to six pin uh, power connector. So that's, that's useful. Actually seems really exciting. This is a graphics card I've, I've never seen before. The first thing that I notice with this graphics card is that it, it doesn't have a six pin PCI Express connector. So why are they giving us this connector with it? And then the rear IO is actually very promising. Uh, we've got a display port, HDMI and DVI. Uh, so there's no VGA, which is usually a giveaway sign 
that it's a much older graphics card than it's advertised to be. Um, yeah, I actually think this is an RX 560. It looks like it might be one, uh, but we're going to test it and see if it works and how it performs. And then we're obviously going to take off the heatsink as well so that we can look underneath and see what's going on here. And now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if this little thing fires up seems like we're fine starting up we've got image straight off the bat it's not behaving weirdly at all so that's good it does detect four gigs of gddr5 with 128 bit bus oh stuff's happening i think it's just rescaling uh system changes uh please reboot your computer to take effect uh, let's restart Okay, so we've rebooted and GPU-Z now does actually recognize it. Okay, so we're looking good, we're looking good, everything seems to check out. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do some game benchmarks. Uh, we're gonna see how well this graphics card runs. And I'm also gonna do some thermal tests, especially worried about those, those exposed memory modules there. We'll see kind of what temperatures we get with this card. And then, just for the hell of it, I'm gonna take the cooler off and we're gonna see what's going on on the PCB underneath that beauty. So I've been playing a couple rounds of CSGO, um, and, well, the temperatures are pretty good. The cooler is, is just stuck at 100%. You don't actually have control of the fan speed. It's not variable. Now, after doing the benchmarks, hmm, my spidey senses started tingling again. If you compare it to the results that other people seem to be getting on the internet with the RX 560, it didn't, it didn't quite line up the way I thought it would. Now, that's not the only thing that makes me feel that something fishy is going on here. Because when you look at GPU-Z, it tells you that it's a 560, and then you click on the lookup function, which actually validates the card, and it takes you to a web page that tells you that it's an RX 460 2 gig variant. That doesn't really make sense either. And hardware info also reads the card as an RX 460. So there's some conflicting messages going on here. It's starting to seem like the kind of graphics card you wouldn't feel comfortable being alone with at night. So let's take off the cooler and see what GPU we're working with. So here we have the actual die, which in itself isn't entirely weird for an RX 560. Um, you can see all the components around the die uh, do actually kind of correspond with what RX 460 and 560 uh, GPUs look like. The thing that's a bit weird about it though is that the actual die number on, on the die uh, doesn't really correlate with any of the die numbers that, um, you know, various versions of the 460 and the 560 have on them. It's pretty weird that it doesn't. Now, the thing is, that doesn't in itself mean that it's, that it's a dodgy, uh, that it's a dodgy GPU. Because the thing is, unfortunately, there isn't like a public database where AMD tells you what die numbers correlate to what GPUs. Um, NVIDIA is actually really good about this because they just print the GPU name on the actual uh, GPU die. So that's, that's pretty good. Whereas with this, it's quite difficult to identify a GPU by that number. I actually spent an entire day trying to figure out what the damn graphics card was, because it kind of looks like an RX 460 or 560 die, but then because the die number is weird, like it, it didn't make any sense, and because the performance was bad, it also didn't make any sense, and there isn't a huge catalog of information around this stuff on the internet, so it's just, it's difficult to figure out what these cards are. Now, I actually have a theory around what graphics card I think this is, and I, th I think I may have figured it out. I think this is an AMD RX 560D which is a cut-down version of the graphics card that AMD made for the Chinese eCafe market. The actual shader cores the GPU-Z tells us it has um, actually checks out. It seems like the right amount. And another reason that I think it performs worse uh, than the normal 560 is because it doesn't actually have a boost frequency. It just has like a base frequency of 1150, and that's what the graphics card runs at. It doesn't boost any higher than that. Uh, so the cut-down core with the lower core speed kind of explains the worst performance in games. 
Now, in my opinion, the only thing that Korn did wrong here is they didn't specify that this is an RX 560 Leper edition. You can kind of figure that out from the specs, but the specs are really dodgy and they're all over the place, right? So that, you know, it, it doesn't give you a clear indication and it doesn't seem to be trustworthy. Now, this whole exercise makes it pretty clear to me that if you're buying a budget graphics card, you need to be pretty careful, especially with these more dodgy listings. With that, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I'm actually gonna try and flash a proper RX 560 BIOS onto it and overclock the living crap out of it so that we can see if we can get really good performance from it. Uh, so subscribe if you wanna see that. Follow me on whatever social media you like. Uh, I'm not gonna be streaming today. I'm taking the weekend off to go and check out the woods around Vancouver. I think it's gonna be pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, so until the next video, bye-bye.